In this video, I will teach you how to create databases in AWS Cloud using Amazon RDS. So make sure you watch this video till the end and also subscribe to Cloud Champ. Amazon RDS is a very popular service in AWS that lets you create relational databases in the cloud. There are two different types of databases, relational databases and non-relational databases, also known as SQL database and no SQL database. So using RDS, you can create all the SQL databases like Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, PostgreSQL, IBM DB2, and so on. But if you want to create the NoSQL database, you can use another AWS service, which is DynamoDB. So using DynamoDB, you can create NoSQL databases in the cloud. So when you click on Create Database, you can see all the engines which are supported by RDS. You can create MySQL database, MariaDB database, PostgreSQL, Oracle, Microsoft SQL, IBM DB2. But Amazon also have their own Aurora, which is Amazon's own proprietary database service. You have Aurora for MySQL and Postgres. When you use Aurora PostgreSQL, you get three times more speed than the normal PostgreSQL. You can read the features here. So up to three times faster, up to 128 TB of scaling. Similarly, if you use Aurora MySQL, you get features like five times faster than the normal MySQL database. So whenever you have an application in production, you can use Aurora databases to get all these different benefits. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a Postgres database. One more thing to note, you can create databases in AWS Cloud in two different ways. First is by using the EC2 service. So I can install Postgres on my server, which could be Ubuntu or Amazon Linux. Or else I could do it using the RDS like I have here. So what is the difference? As we all know, Amazon RDS is a managed database service. So everything is going to be managed by AWS itself. So starting from installation to backup, patching, everything is going to be managed by AWS. Whereas if you use EC2, you have to install the database yourself. You will have to create script to backup the data. You will have to do the patching yourself. Everything is managed by us. This is why RDS is known as managed database service. So let me show you what are the different settings that you can do with RDS. When I click on create database, you have two options here. You can create a database either using standard create option or using the easy create option. When you choose standard create, you have options to configure it. But when you use easy create, AWS will give you recommendations to create your database. Let's go with standard create now. I'm going to be creating my Postgres database. Next, I will choose the engine version. So Postgres has different version. You can choose to use Postgres 16, or if you want to use Postgres 15, 14, anything, you can choose the version here. Next, you select the template. Do you want to use this database for a production environment or for dev test or for free tier? When you use this database for production, you can deploy this database in multi AZ deployment, which means your database is going to be deployed in different AZ at once. But for now, as we are learning things, let's go with the free tier option. And when you use free tier, you only have single database in one AZ. Next setting is to give the name of your database. This name is going to be shown in your RDS console like this. So this database has the name database one, the new database that I'm going to create is going to have the name database two. You can name this anything you want. For example, my app DB. Next, you need to give the username. So you can give the username for your database. Right now, the username is Postgres. You can make it admin, my user, super user, anything you want. Next is to give the password for this database. You can choose to give the password yourself, or else you can also choose to put the password in the AWS Secrets Manager, which is another AWS service to put your secret files, passwords, API keys, etc. For now, I'm going to be putting my password myself. So let's put the password here. Make sure not to use the slash or these apostrophe symbols as you can see here. I'm going to be putting my password. And this password will be used when you want to connect to your Postgres database that you're creating now. So this is my password. Let's go to the next setting. You can see here, you will have to choose the database instance that you want to create. The database instance by default is T4G micro. And as we have selected the free tier option, we cannot select anything apart from the free tier instances here. So if you use production or dev test, you can go with D3, T3 large or T3 2x large, or maybe something else. But for now we have selected free tier, so we can only use micro. Next, you can define how much storage do you want for this database. So if you are storing large amount of data, you can increase the storage from 20 GB to up to 1000 GB, or you can go up to 6000 GB here. But if you want to auto scale, like depending on the data coming in, you want to increase your storage. You can also enable the auto scaling option here. So you have auto scaling option, which means your database is going to increase from 20 up to 1000 GB when you enable this. 
Next, you can select the connectivity option. So you can choose to connect your database only through your EC2 instance, or if you want to connect it outside your AWS account, you can choose this option. So I'm going to be choosing this option because I will show you how to connect to Postgres database in your local machine using the command or maybe using uh, different clients like PG admin, etc. Next, you select the VPC where you want to launch your RDS database, the subnet group. Next setting is to define how do you want to access your database? Do you want to access your database publicly outside your AWS account? Or do you want to access your database only in your VPC? So you can choose to do any of these options. For now, as I said, I will be accessing my database outside the AWS account. I will make it public access. But the best practice according to AWS is to not make your databases public. So you can put them in private subnet or you can make them not public uh, such that RDS will only be accessible inside the VPC that you have created your database in. So I'm going to be creating, making it public for now. You can also attach a security group to your database instance, defining what port should be allowed, who can actually access your database by creating security group rules. For now, I'm selecting the default option. No preferences for the AZs, no need to create proxy as of now. Next, we will scroll down and I'll show you other options like monitoring. You can enable monitoring and this is why RDS is managed because monitoring is done automatically when you enable a setting. You also have other things like backup, encryption and so on. So you have enabled automated backups. We can also keep the backup either for one one day or for 35 days. Uh, and you can also select the timing whenever you want to create this backup. So these are all the settings you have along with encryption and so on. Lastly, when you're done with configuring your database, scroll down and click on create database. This will go ahead and create your database. So it usually takes around 10 to 15 minutes to create a database. Right now the database is in creating status and you can see I have another database which is available. It is also a PostgreSQL database. Let me show you how will you connect to this database once it is created. So when you click on a database, you will see all the different information such as the endpoint where you are going to be connecting to your database. So this is the difference. When you do it on EC2, you have the public IP address that you will use as a host. But when you use RDS, you have the endpoint that you will use to connect to your database. The port number is 5432, the default PostgreSQL port. The AC is this, VPC is this. Similarly, you can also check monitoring data in this, logs, events, configurations and other stuff. So this is how you can create a database in the cloud. Once the database is created, if you want to change any settings, you can always modify the database. So when you click on modify, you can change your configuration and then apply this modification to have that new setting in your RDS database. Along with this, as we all know, RDS is a managed database and you have options to enable automated backups which means backups are going to be creating every seven days and all these backups are stored here in automated backups. Right now, I don't have any backup except these two that I created now. So you can see the backup is already created and I can go ahead and create a new database out of this backup if I want to. Along with this, you can also manually create a backup if you haven't enabled automated backups. So how to do this? When you click on a database and you click on actions on the top, you can see here you have an option to create snapshot, which is this one, take snapshot. When I click on take snapshot, I can define the name of the instance or the snapshot I want to take. Uh, so let's say my DB backup and click on take snapshot. This will take the backup of your database, which are done manually. So you can find all your databases here, but make sure whenever you take a backup, you will have to pay for the storage this backup is taking. So whenever you have extra bill, also make sure your databases backups are deleted as well. So this is how you will create databases in RDS and also take backups using snapshots or using automated backups. Now our database is ready and it's available for us to use. Let me show you how you will connect to this database. So this is a PostgreSQL database and if you want to connect to it, you need to first install Postgres in your local machine. I already have Postgres installed. To show you, I'm going to run the command sudo service PostgreSQL status. So I have Postgres 16 installed and when I run this, command, you can see it's active and running. So you can connect to this Postgres database either by running commands or also by using a Postgres client such as PG admin, a very popular Postgres client. So you can either use PG admin where you can connect to your database and also look at all the different data inside the database in a UI console uh, using this particular client. For now, I'm going to be running the command and show you how to do it. So to connect to a database, you require three things. The first is a username. So the username for this database we have is Postgres, the username. We need password. We also need a host, which is going to be IP address. 
But as we are using RDS, we don't have IP address. It's the endpoint that we are going to be using. So let's copy this. I'm going to be running the command psql. So sudo psql hyphen u for the username, which is Postgres hyphen h for the host, which is the endpoint. And lastly, I have to put the password as well. So I'll put dash dash password and press enter. Let's put the password for my database. So this is my password. If I press enter, I will be able to connect to the database if everything is working properly. So I'm now inside the database and I can start creating databases by running create database query. So create database my DB. And this says database is created. You can run the command uh, such as slash L and you can see my DB is now here. So this is how you create databases in the cloud and also connect to it. In this video, I've shown you how to create RDS databases, how to connect to it, how to take backups, what are snapshots and so on. In the next video, we are going to be doing a project where we set up a WordPress website on EC2 instance, also using RDS MySQL database. So if you want me to create a project, let me know in the comment section. I hope this video was informative. Please like this video and subscribe to CloudChamp. Thank you and see you in the next video.